Hi there, and welcome to this introduction video for the Strider plugin in Unreal Engine 4. In this video, we're gonna go over all the nodes that come with Strider and see exactly what we do. In the next five tutorial videos, we're gonna go over each node individually and see how to set it up and how it works. In the final tutorial, I'm gonna set up an entire animation state graph from scratch, which will include all of this, all of the state machines, the animation graph, and the event graph, and the character. It might look like a lot, but it's really quite simple, and we can get a lot out of these nodes. So let's have a look at the individual nodes for this video and just see what they do so we can get a feel for the plugin. So the orientation warping node here uh, warps the orientation of the character. We can see we have a play jog um, forward rifle animation here, and he's running forward. Now the orientation warping node takes a direction value, which is in degrees, where zero is forward and negative values are left, positive values are right. If I change that value, you can see the character can actually run in different directions with this orientation warping uh, while playing the same animation. Notice that the character still faces in the same direction, and this is really good for strafing. By using this, we can get a full 360 degree movement without using uh, blend spaces and just switching between animations, which is basically what the setup is here. So why don't we wanna use blend spaces? Well, there's two reasons. Performance is one. Blend spaces have an overhead to calculate the weights of the animations. It has to blend those animations together and um, that's just a little bit more perform uh, performance hit than uh, this setup right here. The other thing is that blend spaces with uh, animation sets like this cause foot crossover or ra rather leg crossover where the legs basically go into each other and it's really difficult to try and fix that. But this does that automatically because we never actually blend animations together. Together. We're just orientation warping and then we're switching to different direction animations and orientation warping those as well. So that's a very useful node. It's going to give us a lot of animation coverage with just a few animations. Next we have our stride warping node and the stride warping node warps the stride of the character and it's actually the flagship node of the strider plugin hence the name. So let's just change the stride scale so it's by default is one and that's going to give us our default animation. If I increase the stride scale, you can see the character takes larger strides and larger steps. If I decrease it, the character takes smaller steps. If I set it to zero, you can see the character is pretty much running on the spot, which looks a bit funny, but it's a lot better than the alternative, which is changing play rate. If I set play rate to zero, the character just freezes, and that's a lot more, less realistic, unless you really want to freeze the character. Uh, same if we're just going, so a play rate of 0.5, the character looks like they're running in slow motion. And we can bypass this by using uh, stride scaling to just change the stride a little bit. I actually combine a little bit of play rate, limited to about 10% uh, up or down, with stride warping to change the speed of my animations. I get no foot sliding, the animation looks good, it doesn't uh, break the animation. So that is the stride warping node. And of course that works seamlessly with our orientation warping. Um, we can scale the stride along those different orientation directions. Next we have in this particular setup, we have the acceleration warping node. And the idea is that with this node, we can pass in the character's actual acceleration, which we calculate from a delta velocity. Uh, into the node and it's going to change the character's posture so it looks like they're accelerating. Essentially it's leaning into the direction of acceleration. In this particular case I'm just using it to lean the character when I activate sprint so that I'm leaning into the sprint. I don't actually have a sprint animation in this graph so I'm kind of making it by combining stride warping to increase the stride, leaning the character and using a bank warp node which we'll look at soon. So you can see here, as, as I'm accelerating, I set the acceleration value higher, we're leaning forward more. If I set it low, we lean back. Now this is all tweakable. We can tweak how much it's rotating, how much we're leaning over and all that. So that is the acceleration or lean warping node. Next we have the bank warp node. And as I said, this allows us to create essentially banking animations. And if I change that, we basically pass in the yaw rate of our character. And we can see now that the character is banking to the right and in the opposite direction, banking to the left. Again, we can tweak how much we tilt, we can tweak how much we upper body twist to get the bank that we want. 
That's another two animations that we don't need to have and a bit less blend space as well. So those are those nodes. There is one more node and it actually lives outside of all the states just at the very end of our graph before our leg or foot IK or two bone IK, sorry. And that's the slope warping node, which allows us to basically warp the stride along slopes. You could think of it as a grounder IK, but it's a lot simpler than that. Uh, and it's a lot more performant than a grounder IK that uses traces to actually trace from each foot. While this might not be as accurate, if you have a lot of characters doing, uh, you know, that uh, running on slopes, this is going to look good while not grinding your game to a halt. Um, so it's a kind of an in-between uh, version and you can use it as you like. I might add a high quality version to it later, but let's just demonstrate that. I'll add in a bit of slopes. You can see we're running down slope here. Let me actually turn on the animation debugging. You can actually get an idea of the debugging options we have. We can enable and disable all the nodes at runtime with these console commands. And for stride warping and slope warping, we have some visualization options for debugging. You can see here the Blue represents the actual slope. The, um, the dark blue represents the original foot positions and the green represents the resultant foot positions. If we have a look here, we can see the how the hips are being shifted. The yellow is the first shift and the green is the second shift. So we can have, you know, transverse slopes and you know, change it to be an incline, whatever. The idea is that you will set the slope detection mode to automatic and the slope will be detected from the character capsule at runtime automatically. You can expose these values here and set it yourself with your own detection logic, but this works pretty well for the most part in automatic mode and it's a lot easier to set up. So there you have it. That is the five uh, warping nodes that come with Strider. Let's have a quick look at the example project animation system to see how this sort of combines together. Now keep in mind this isn't a production ready AAA animation uh, graph or setup. I've gone as far as I need to go to demonstrate the nodes. So we don't have transitions, we don't have turn in place, we don't have all that stuff that you would make. This is just in scope for Strider and not beyond that. So here's a character and let me just turn these debugging options off. You can see it actually works at runtime as well. So if I go animno.warp.stride, because this is, oh no, this is slope.debug, we're gonna set that to zero and that will all go away. Let me just grab my controller so we can have a look at this. So I'm gonna walk and you can see if I push a little bit on the stick, we get some really slow walking. We don't get any foot sliding because the stride warping is changing how big the steps are we're taking. And then if I push further on the stick, we take bigger steps. So that's stride warping in action. And this works for our walk and for our run here. You can see the run goes down until it eventually changes into the other uh, state. It's working seamlessly there. Here we can see a little bit of our um, our orientation warping. We've got the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, but we're also using the orientation warping to get all the in-betweens. So that's a really nice option. And we're just switching the animations when we get to like a threshold. Um, and I'll explain all of that in the last tutorial video, how I do that myself. So you don't have to go and guess that. So that's those options. The next we have is slope warping and you can see it working here pretty well. The leg is never hyperextended and the hips are shifted in several ways to make sure that it works. And you also note that all of the other nodes work together well, even on slopes and, and all together. So that's quite nice. One limitation to be aware of, um, I did mention that uh, this isn't a per foot solution. So when you get to corners, it's going to sort of take an average when you're sitting on a corner like this. Um, but yeah, it's designed to be something a bit more performant. Um, and again, I might add a high quality option in the future, but just don't count on that at this point. So that is those options. Let's have a look at our acceleration and bank warping node with our sprint. So this is something I did just to demonstrate how we can create animation without having it. So here is our sprint. If I hold down shift, we go a bit faster. Now the stride is getting scaled up. You can see the character is banking. Again, 
I don't have any banking animations. I'm simply bank warping. And I'd say it looks pretty convincing. Um, another cool thing that you probably haven't noticed is that when it banks, the slope warping uh, compensates for the fact that the feet get rotated sideways. So the feet basically get planted down again with that bank warping. It's a bit subtle, but uh, it is there. And um, if I do it sideways, now I would probably not let my character you know, sprint backwards like this, but either way, you can see the uh, acceleration warping node. I'm just using it in this case to just lean it in the direction of sprint. So there we go, three nodes uh, combined to make a sprint um, sort of animation there, and we're not getting any foot sliding. So that's a basic setup with strider nodes. We can get this behavior really quite easily. I'll just show you quickly the overall setup. We have the state machine, just three states, really simple here. This is only a conduit, it's not actually a state. Um, and we have this event graph, which might look very complex. However, watch the video, uh, the last tutorial video, and I'll go over each step here. Each of these is just calculating something as an input into those nodes. And I've also provided a blueprint function library written in C++, so you can severely reduce the complexity of your blueprints here. For example, we can figure out which cardinal direction we're going in with this node. We can calculate that direction that is the input for the, um, the orientation warping node. And for example, here is a function that helps us split up the play rate and the stride scale when we're scaling our speed. So that's all there for you. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope this has given you a better understanding of exactly what the Strider plugin does and is. And stay tuned for the next videos, which will go into detail on every single one. See you then.